Good afternoon, everybody. To our church family, Faith Revival Center Church of Edmonton, we would like uh, to say thank you so much for all your prayers and your support. I really appreciate all of you. I, I wish I can be with you in person, but right now, according to uh, the advice of uh, the doctors and nurses, I have to refrain from uh, joining uh, a crowd or something like that. But uh, I really believe that, uh, you know, one day I can join with you in person. So in behalf of my family, I really thank the Lord for all of you, brothers and sisters, for your support and your uh, prayers and even for the text messages that you sent to me, uh, letting me know that uh, you miss me and we are you are always praying for me. And of course, I would like to say thank you for all our church members, elders and leaders and also to my family, to my sons, Kenneth, Mark, and Pastor uh, Philip for really assisting us here in this uh, difficult moment. But uh, thank God that we have victory in Jesus. Amen. I'm just excited, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. And today, I choose to uh, spend time with you to give you a little uh, inspirational or some little lesson that I can share with you according to the Word of God. And I was thinking, um, of course, that uh, we have a, a speaker today who will be preaching. Amen. Our beloved uh, brother, uh, Romel Chavez, will be uh, sharing the Word of the Lord. But uh, let me give you some, you know, a simple uh, story here in the Bible. But we can we can learn something. Amen. And we can apply it in our lives. We all know that we all need, need, need blessings, right? We all need blessing, blessing from the Lord. And this blessing is overflowing, just like uh, the book of um, Psalms 23, that my cup runneth over. Amen. And it's uh, so good to, to know that, uh, you know, if you are serving the Lord, your cup runneth over, meaning it's overflowing. So we have a lot of questions how we can have an overflowing blessing in our lives. Amen. It's one of you, a father, a mother, and the children desire to have a continuous blessing. And that blessing is from the Lord. And, uh, you know, as your pastor, uh, it's quite a while that I have not preached uh, the word. And, uh, yeah, but I just want to speak to you today and give you a little story here in the Bible that's really uh, very uh, intriguing and encouraging as well. Praise the Lord. And uh, this is what I choose to share to you today. But remember that even Abraham, the pronouncement of God that I will bless thee, I will bless your seed. That was the promise of God, even in, you know, in, um, in uh, Genesis chapter 22, I believe, verse 18, that God has a promise. You know, that uh, I will bless you, Abraham, because you obeyed my voice. So today, for all of you right now, I know and I believe, that as you listen to this word today, that God has a blessing for you. But there is a secret in receiving that overflowing blessing. Amen. And when, you talk, when we talk about blessing, we talk about the miracles, the power of God. Okay, here in the book of uh, John chapter 6, it is a story about, you know, the ministry of Jesus by feeding the 5,000 people. Okay, feeding the 5,000 people. And this uh, time, the Lord is doing some ministry from village to village, place to place. He travel and do the ministry. Uh, that's wonderful because Jesus is here. He was here in this world to do ministry, to serve the people, to meet their needs. And one of the needs of the people are healing. Praise the Lord. They need healing. They need the touch of God. They need miracles. So here in this story, it talks about, uh, it says here, after these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is in um, the shore of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him. Take note of that. During the time of Jesus, it's not only few people or many, but multitudes of people followed him. Amen. And I believe that when, when, there, when Jesus is there, 
when there is revival, there is always multitudes of people follow, followed him. Amen. And then uh, the great multitude followed him because they uh, seized his miracles, which he did on them uh, that were uh, diseased. Even, you know, even those people who were dead, they were resurrected. And Jesus went up into the mountain and there he sat with his disciples and the Passover, a feast um, of the loaves, was uh, nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company. Look at that great company come unto him. And he said unto them, unto Philip, uh, When shall we, we buy bread that these men eat? Can you imagine that it was Jesus Christ who asked Philip, where can we buy bread? Do you think? He doesn't know. No, he's just testing Philip. You know, what is the response? He is trying to, to know the faith of Philip regarding the situations. But I want to let you know that as far as Jesus Christ is concerned, everything is under control. He knows everything. Amen. He is not asking because he doesn't know, but uh, he knows it. Where to get, uh, you know, miracles. And here, uh, and this he said to prove him, uh, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 penny of worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. See, uh, Philip has a solution, but you know, it's lacking. It's not enough. See, it's not enough. Uh, they, they, they can have the money, but then if they will buy bread, they will just take a little. And that was the answer of Philip. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, uh, saith unto him, There is a lot here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Now, I just want to uh, frankly, frankly uh, speak to you today that here in this account, they are just counting the men. You see, the people who followed Jesus, they are just counting the men. They did not count the children. They did not count the women. But I believe that there are women there. I believe that there are uh, kids. There are, you know, there are, that there are children there following. But in this life sometimes, you know, <laughs> take note of this. In this life, there are times that people, they just counted, you know, just like the men. Okay, they just counted the, the, the men. But they did not count. They just disregard the women and the children. But don't you know that even though in that situations that uh, sometimes we felt that we are not counted. Sometimes, you know, even the women, they are disregarded. Not, they're so important. And even the kids. Why? why what are you doing here, kid? But this boy... Who prepared the food, the food for the boy? It was the mom and the grandma who prepared her oh boy. Okay, you want to follow Jesus? Here's your lunch. Here's your food. And my God, hallelujah. The man that was counted, the man that was considered very important, they have no bread. Nothing to give to Jesus, but only a boy. Take note of that. So if you are here today and you felt, oh, I'm, I'm not sufficient. I am not enough. I'm not even counted. They don't consider me very important. But in the eyes of God, I want to let you know, even in the story, it was the mom and the grandmom who prepared the, the food for the boy. And it was the boy that was not even counted. Oh, willingly give, you know. The, the 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 five loaves and two fish give it to 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 Andrew can you imagine that brethren amen so i want you to see this because this is only very short but i want to see this 
if you want to see a miracle, listen men, listen ladies, listen young people, if you want to see a miracle and an overflowing blessing in your life, you need to understand that Jesus cannot perform a miracle unless you have something to give to him. He cannot multiply the bread unless the, when he asks, what, have, what do you have? We have here a boy with five loaves and two fish. You see? Amen. Sometimes we think that, oh, um, the Lord can we just pray to the Lord and nothing. But the key is always to have something to give to Jesus. Even in our Christian life, why we give? Sometimes we're so glad that, you know, our men, they learn to give to the Lord, to honor the Lord. Even with their tithes and their offerings, their time, their talent, their treasure. Amen. But in the story, it was the boy who gave something to Jesus. Brethren, so I want you to understand that here in our church, I encourage you when the Lord will ask you, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? Are you willing to give something to Jesus in order for you to experience a miracle? You're expecting a miracle. You expect a blessing, an overflowing blessing, but you are stingy. You did not bring something to Jesus. You see, it's good even for the women. I even noticed that there are women in our church that they are givers. But how about the men? This story is very clear, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a reminder to all of us. Because as until now, the Lord is asking, what is in your hand? The Lord is not asking something from your hand in order for you to have nothing. But through the things that you can give to Jesus, He can multiply it. You see? This is a very good lesson for you and for me today. And even for you, ladies, don't feel sad. Even sometimes you are not counted, but just continue to follow Jesus. And look what happened. Look what happened. Amen. When the boy gave the, the, the bread and the fish to Andrew, and Andrew gave it to Jesus, he blesses it. He blesses it, and then he breaks it. In our life, Christians, believers, there is always a breaking. Sometimes we felt sad. Sometimes we, we felt that somebody treat us not good. Sometimes we experience that there are people you, whom you wanted to help, but they, they speak against you, you know? They, they, they want to destroy you. It's a part of breaking. How many times that even our pastors, the problem is the heart because of all the pain and all of, you know, the, the stresses and everything that they experience in leading the people. And that is a part of life. There is always a breaking. There is always a test, testing. But my friend, my brothers and sisters today, if the Lord is breaking you, amen, meaning to say that He will multiply you. He will bless you. And what did, what did Jesus do? He break it and give it to the hand of His disciples. And once the disciples receive it, take note, you disciples, you did not do the miracle. It was Jesus. Amen. When He give it to your hand, Praise the Lord. That is where the multiplication occurs. It happened. Amen. And you know what? The good news is the God that we are serving is the God of multiplication. He can multiply. One day when you face the Lord, you will wish that you love the Lord more. You serve the Lord more. When you are facing the Lord and the book of works and the book of life is open, He will know what you have, what have you done. And that is where you will say, oh, how I wish I serve God more. I give and support the mission more. I support the church more. But it's too late. 
while you have still chance today, you need to do something. You need to be faithful. Amen. Because one day you will give an account. You will give an account for your time. You will give an account for your treasure, your money. You will give an account for your talent. So as your pastor, I am encouraging you today. I mean, before you face the judgment of God, before you face Him, you have to be faithful. You have to be true. And if there are some breaking in your life, in your family, just be patient. Because, amen, after all the breaking, there's multiplication. And when they have that, when everybody eat the, the bread and the fish, you know what happened? How many left? Twelve basket more of those uh, bread. My brothers and sisters today, wow, amen. So this lesson is very important that I want you to remember. Just be patient. Serve the Lord with gladness. Hallelujah. And then the multiplication of blessings will follow. Because in this life, we have no control. But God, Jesus Christ, has a control in your life. And I am excited, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let's continue to serve God faithfully. And when the Lord will ask you again, what is in your hand? Just like Moses. Amen. He can, he can do, Jesus, God can do a miracle. But then he asked, what is in your hand? A rod. And the rod was used to open the Red Sea. You see? That's a wonderful lesson, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. So don't hesitate, young people. Amen. Just like the boy, he gave it all. And he was there listening. He was close to Jesus when the miracles did happen because he brought something to Jesus. Are you willing to give what is in your hand? Amen. And serve the Lord. Wow. And I will just continue this, <laughs> you know, when, I, when I, I will preach this again to you. But then today, I think this lesson is very important. Everything is under control. When you put something in the hand of God, He will multiply it. He will multiply your blessing. He will bless your children. He will bless your family. He will bless your relatives. And we can all rejoice together. So this is a wonderful lesson that we can give. Oh, thank you, boys. Thank you, kids, that you brought something to Jesus. Thank you, young people. Thank you, ladies and men. Thank you so much. And may the Lord God bless you. And remember, we love you with the Lord, love of the Lord and continue receiving the overflowing blessing of God. God said, I will bless you. I will bless you. Children, praise the Lord, your, your family, I will bless a church, amen, who are obedient to the word of God. God bless you all. <laughs>